Okay, folks, yo, what is up? It is currently December the 8th, and it is Christmas party season. It's the time of year where most of us are gonna be going out with friends, with family, with work colleagues, doing loads of shit that we're gonna regret, probably drinking too much, waking up with savage hangovers, but we're gonna get some great stories from it. Alcohol can be fun, it can be a nice way to relax every now and then. However, it does have an effect on your body, on your training, on your body shape, on your brain. I'm gonna go through in this video a few kind of precautionary uh, things to take into account and to help manage your expectations over the Christmas period to try and maybe just monitor the amount of drinking you're doing. This is not me saying don't have fun, this is me saying go out and have as much fun as you want. Just be mindful of the alcohol that you're taking in and be mindful of the effects of that. It's not going to allow you to continually progress throughout December, which is okay, but certainly you need to be monitoring things so you can at the very least maintain. So what we are gonna look at uh, just a few very, very basic things to how alcohol affects the body and what you need to do to manage your expectations and how you can almost kind of help yourself out. I'll give you a few tips at the very end to help yourself out throughout December and hopefully by the time January comes around you won't have lost too much ground on your training. So let's get started. How alcohol affects fat loss. First up, alcohol is just empty calories, okay? It's calories that are gonna take you over the allowance that you have set for yourself, and you're really getting nothing from it. You're getting no goodness from it. You know, if you take in calories from carbohydrates, you're getting uh, various nutrients, vitamins, minerals, dependent on the type of food you eat. If you're taking in calories from protein, you're getting the building blocks of building muscle, you've got a high thermic effect that's gonna help you burn fat. If you're taking in calories from fats, it's going to help cellular, uh, cellular health, it's gonna help energy both immediate and it's gonna to help to slow down the release of carbohydrates, etc., into your system. There's many, many benefits to most calories. However, alcohol is not one of them. Alcohol is just completely useless, irrelevant calories. It's gonna take you up over your calorie allowance, possibly improve the likelihood of you gaining fat, and you're getting nothing in return for that, okay? Secondly, alcohol is used as a primary source of fuel. This means that when you have calories from alcohol in your system, you are not going to burn calories from anything else. Now this includes the food you eat, whether good or bad, and the stored body fat you have, okay? So if you're fairly regularly out on the piss, you're drinking fairly regularly, you're topping yourself up with alcohol calories, your body is not going to burn calories from food, okay? It's likely to then store those calories, so it's gonna increase your ability to uh, store fat. Because it's still burning calories from alcohol, you're certainly not going to burn any fat, so you can't win here. If you have calories from alcohol in your system, your body is going to take them as the path of least resistance. It's going to burn through all of them before it even attempts to burn through calories elsewhere. Third, alcohol can affect your digestion. This is quite a big one. There's a lot going on in your gut and there's a lot that can happen if you start to damage it, but we'll keep it relatively simple. Um, it's seen as a poison essentially to a digestive system. So uh, it's gonna elevate stress. It's going to uh, create some form of stress response in the gut, which is not a good thing. When that happens, the production of digestive enzymes is going to be reduced, okay? When that happens, you're not gonna be able to digest the food you're eating properly, which is going to lead to bloating, discomfort, you know, a general feeling of lethargy and being unwell, which you don't want over the Christmas period when you're trying to have fun with your family and you're trying to have a really, really nice time off work. Um, you're not going to be absorbing nutrients properly when your gut is damaged or its function is diminished somewhat. So again, even with the best will in the world, you could be eating great food, but you're not going to be absorbing the nutrients from that food because your gut isn't working properly. This is then gonna have a knock-on effect to a whole bunch of stuff. It means that you're not taking in certain nutrients which allow you essentially the building blocks to create other things, to create hormones, to uh, help your body do what it needs to do day to day and run optimally. Um, you're negatively going to affect your neurotransmitters. So your, uh, uh, your feelings of motivation, your feelings of happiness, your feelings of uh, just general well-being are going to be reduced or they're going to be kind of disrupted a little bit. You don't want that. Fourth thing, it negatively affects your liver. Um, your liver essentially acts as a filter. It's there to uh, cleanse all of the shit that shouldn't be in your body out of it. It filters things and helps keep you alive, helps you to survive. Now, alcohol is going to affect the liver quite badly. And if you damage the liver, the liver is no longer able to do its job. And one of those jobs is to help metabolize uh, 
energy essentially from proteins, fats, carbohydrates. If it's not doing that correctly, again, you're going to be deficient in a lot of things you need. Your body is not going to be absorbing and using, utilizing the foods that you need to utilize correctly in order to build a great physique. So if you cause a load of damage to yourself over Christmas with excessive alcohol intake, your journey back to fitness and health following that in January, February, March, whatever, is going to be much, much more difficult. So protect your liver. Things like milk thistle, plenty of water, plenty of green vegetables can help. But again, just don't do the damage. Don't overload your liver because if that is happening, it's going to cause a massive barrier to fat loss later down the line. You don't want that. Alcohol also lowers inhibitions. Now, this is the reason why most great stories start with, oh, this one time I was really, really drunk, but I did something cool. Or stupid, usually stupid. Um, it also lowers your inhibitions with food choices. This is a big one, both during the time that you're pissed and afterwards, you know, when you're on the hangover, you think that eating worse food is a good idea because you feel like you need it, you feel like you can justify it, et cetera, et cetera. This means that not only have you taken in loads of excess calories from the alcohol you've already drunk, but it means that you're taking in a bunch of excess and useless, quite often useless calories from foods that you have during or after, which again is just going to add insult to injury. So alcohol lowers your inhibitions, which is going to cause you a bit of a nightmare with regards to dietary compliance. And trust me, when you start to slip off the dietary compliance wagon, it's very, very difficult to get back on. Reason being because not only are you, you know, you, you've fallen into a trap and you're creating bad habits again, but also uh, from a neurotransmitter point of view, because the gut is likely to be slightly damaged and not working optimally, you're less motivated because you don't have the right neurotransmitters going to your brain, etc. So you're less motivated to actually get back on it. Okay, there's a kind of a science behind feelings that you all need to make sure you stay on top of. Very, very important. So. Keep alcohol under control and you will make better choices with food during Christmas or during the hangovers, during the days, whatever. Alcohol is gonna negatively affect your sex hormone. It's gonna negatively affect testosterone, which is gonna impair your body's ability to recover, impair your body's ability to build muscle and impair your body's ability to burn fat. Again, it's also going to affect mood, uh, uh, thought patterns, uh, your feeling of well-being, etc., which you do not want. Secondly, because it is a, essentially a xenoestrogen and its toxins going into the body, it's likely to negatively affect your estrogen levels over time, which you, again, you don't want because this is going to increase the likelihood of female pattern fat storage. It's going to decrease your aggression in a gym. It's going to potentially decrease your body's ability to recover. Um, it's gonna cause a whole host of problems with regards to your body composition in general training, which we don't want. So alcohol affects your hormonal balance, especially sex hormones, which you do not want. Again, we go back to cortisol as well. When your body sees and feels this poison from uh, alcohol, that is going to steal pregnenolone to feed enough cortisol or to elevate cortisol. When that happens, it's going to reduce your thyroid hormones, it's going to reduce your testosterone, etc., etc., etc. So there's no good coming out of this. Finally, Alcohol is gonna negatively affect your sleep. When alcohol affects your sleep, um, it's going to re reduce your body's ability to recover. It's going to reduce your feelings of well-being. It's going to reduce overall energy. It's going to play with your appetite. It's going to, again, have a knock-on effect to cortisol, which is gonna affect your sex hormones, which is gonna affect your gut, which is gonna affect nutrient absorption, which I could go on. Not getting enough good quality sleep, even if you're in bed for a long time, you haven't had good quality sleep. If you're not getting a good enough night's sleep, if you're not getting enough good night's sleep, nothing else is going to work. Over time, it's really, really, really going to fall apart, okay? So there are many, many negative effects of alcohol. Now, of course, there are some positive effects. The social aspect, spending time with your family, having fun, relaxing a little bit, especially if you're a bit uptight. Uh, but remember, for all of the good sides, there are bad sides. It is balanced, it's a yin and yang for sure. So just be aware of them. Have an amazing Christmas, have an amazing festive season, have some fun with your friends, colleagues, family, whoever it happens to be, but just be aware of what's going on and manage your expectations from day one, you know, and make sure you're not doing it excessively. If you don't need to drink, don't. Of course you don't need to drink, but you know, some occasions it calls for it and it's good fun, it's gonna allow you to relax but just don't drink for the sake of it because that is going to have a knock-on effect to your body, to your brain, and to your ability to lose weight in the future. And certainly in the immediate future, we're talking January, February, the big New Year's push. So just be aware of that. That is alcohol in a nutshell, the negative effects. Now, of course, 
I want you to have fun. What are the best choices you can make? Stick to white spirits uh, and low calorie mixes. You know, gin and tonic, really good quality gin and tonic, uh, vodka, fresh lime and soda, etc. You're really, really, really gonna do your best bet. Certainly all of the other effects are still going to occur, but with regards to calories, those are your lowest calorie options. Um, pick champagne over wine. A glass of champagne is about 60 to 70 calories. Wine is anywhere between two and 300. Beer, anywhere between two and 300, okay? so. Drink responsibly. If you are gonna do it, pick the right things, have fun, relax, but don't go nuts. And of course, manage your expectations. What you put in, you are going to get out. If you put too much alcohol in, it's probably gonna come back out unnecessarily. Um, if you put a lot of effort into managing your alcohol intake over the Christmas period, you're probably gonna come out the other side with a pretty good result. So I hope this little video on alcohol has helped. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments box below.